Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at the electron transport chain. This is the final step of cellular respiration. Remember, in this process, we're taking glucose, turning it into pyruvate, turning it into acetyl-CoA, undergoing the Krebs cycle, spitting out a whole bunch of substrates that can hold hydrogen and electrons for us and handing them off to this particular step. Let's take a look. All right, so what we need to understand is first of all, remember we took glucose and this glucose we turned into pyruvate. In actual fact, we turned it into two molecules of pyruvate, which we then turned into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. All right, in this process of turning glucose to pyruvate, glycolysis, we spat out two molecules of something called NADH. In the process of turning pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, we spat out two more molecules of NADH. And when acetyl-CoA entered the mitochondria and entered what we call the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle, we spat out six NADH and we spat out two FADH2. This is the whole purpose of us undergoing these extensive processes. It's to spit out these NADH molecules and FADH2 molecules. Why? To recap, if you haven't watched my glycolysis or Krebs video, remember this. The whole purpose is for NAD plus or FAD to steal hydrogen from these carbon molecules and with that hydrogen steal electrons. So at the end of the day, the NAD plus stole two hydrogens to create NADH, right? Plus another H and a hydrogen ion. What does this mean? Basically the NAD plus stole a full complete hydrogen. Remember hydrogen is just a positive proton with a negative electron flying around the outside. NAD plus stole one of these to give us NADH plus. Let's ignore this for the moment. Then it stole another hydrogen, but only stole the electron. So getting rid of that. And keeping, or what's remaining, is a positive proton. And another way of writing a positive proton is H+. So that's what NAD plus does. Still two hydrogen. One, it keeps everything. On the second one, it just keeps the electron and releases the proton. What FAD does is actually just takes two hydrogen and creates FADH2. So these hydrogens hold on to electrons. So what we need to have a look at is what do they now do with them? Simple. They, inside the mitochondria here, hand them off to a range of proteins. Now, here inside the mitochondria, we've got six NADH, two FADH2, all have come from one glucose. The two NADH and the two NADH here, they end up entering the mitochondria through one way or another, and then they end up here. So basically, my point is, we've got a whole bunch of NADH sitting in the mitochondria and a whole bunch of FADH2. What now happens? Well, firstly, the NADH will come across this protein complex embedded across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It's an integral protein, which means it spans the complete inner membrane. And so this is called complex one. And what NADH does is it hands it off its electrons like this, hands it off the electrons and releases the protons. So it hands the electrons and releases the protons, right? Now what happens is in this protein complex, a number of what we call redox steps occur. What is this? All right. Redox means reduction and oxidation. They're two totally separate, the flip side of a coin, right? Remember this, L-E-O, Leo. The loss of electrons is oxidation. So when a molecule loses an electron, it's called oxidation. When a molecule gains electrons, it's called reduction. So simply what happens in here is that the electron is passed from one molecule to another molecule. And as it does this, this is redox. Right? One gains, then it loses, then it gains, then it loses. And in this, it excites this protein complex. It excites it enough that this, into this uh, channel here can actually take the hydrogen 
and pump it across into the intermembrane space. That's step one. NADH hands off the electrons, excites complex one, enough so that it can generate a proton motive force to pump the hydrogens across into this intermembrane space. The thing is, this complex cannot hold onto the electron because, or electrons, because it will damage it. Electrons, if it's been stripped or added to something, can cause oxidative stress. This protein is not equipped to handle electrons long term. It will be subject to oxidative stress. So it must hand this electron off, and it hands it off to this thing here. This is called coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10. And what coenzyme Q10 does is it is equipped to hold onto the electron without causing oxidative stress. Perfect. Next thing is this. This is now complex two. This was complex one. This is complex two. Complex two does not steal electrons from NADH, but it does steal electrons from FADH2, producing FAD. Similar thing. The electron jumps in and a whole bunch of redox steps occur, which ends up exciting this particular protein, but there is no transmembrane channel for the hydrogen to be pumped across because it's got the coenzyme Q10 hat on it. There's no room for it to move through. So it excites it, but ultimately its job was just to steal the electrons from FADH2 and again passes it off to coenzyme Q10 because just like complex one, complex two can't hold on to it. So it passes it off. All right, now coenzyme Q10 has these electrons. What it will do is it'll pass these electrons off to complex three. Same thing's happening. It excites complex three through a bunch of redox reactions. And in doing so, creates this proton motive force, because remember, FADH2 gave the electrons to complex two, but released the hydrogen ions, similar to NADH releasing hydrogen ions, but complex one's pumping them up, not complex two, but complex three is also pumping them up into the intermembrane space. So we're starting to really accumulate these hydrogen ions in this intermembrane space. Again, complex three can't hold on to electrons. It will damage it. It must pass it off to an intermediate that can. That's this thing here called cytochrome C. It will take these electrons and look after it for the time being. Now, cytochrome C passes the electrons off to complex four. It plays hot potato with the electrons. All these redox reactions occur exciting it, and that excites this channel, or I should say this pump, to pump the hydrogen ions across into the intermembrane space. What's happened so far? So far, complex one, three, and four have pumped hydrogen ions across into the intermembrane space because they've been excited by playing hot potato with electrons. These electrons cannot stay in any of these complexes, so they need to hand it off to something that's equipped to deal with it that won't cause oxidative stress. That's coenzyme Q10, it helps reduce oxidative stress, and that's cytochrome C, helps reduce oxidative stress. But what I've just said is that it can't hold on to electrons. What happens to complex four? There's no more intermediates for it to pass electrons to. So what it hands it off to is what we call the final electron acceptor or the terminal electron acceptor, which is oxygen. So we've got oxygen here, which this elect these electrons are passed off to. And in doing so, it splits that oxygen like that, O negative. What happens? Well, we've got O negative here, and we've got some hydrogen ions in here as well. They bind together to form water. We produce water as a byproduct of this. But you're probably saying, but all the hydrogen ions are pumped across. There's nothing for water to bind to. Well, let's now take a look at the final step. This is an ATP synthase. This thing creates ATP. It's the whole purpose of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. It's all about this. What happens is 
This high concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space of the mitochondria, they want to go down their concentration gradient and they do so through this channel. And as it moves through, the energy that's released from going down its concentration gradient spins these particular proteins, physically spins them. And the spinning of these proteins allows for ATP to be synthesized. We take ADP and we take phosphate and we end up creating a huge amount of ATP. That's the final product. And again, the hydrogen that then gets pumped back into the inner workings of the mitochondria will fuse or bind, I should say, with this molecular oxygen, which is now negatively charged and produce uh, water. And that water is the byproduct. So the whole purpose of this is to produce all this ATP. That's the whole purpose. And it's because through this process, we have created NADH molecules and FADH2 molecules. They hold onto hydrogen, hold onto electrons, which get passed through the electron transport chain. And at the end of it, we produce an, an amazing amount of ATP. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.